For what purpose does the gentlewoman from New Mexico seek recognition? Madam Speaker, I move that the House suspend the rules and pass the bill H.R. 1619. The clerk will report the title of the bill. Union calendar number 82, H.R. 1619, a bill to clarify the status of gaming conducted by the Catawba Indian Nation and for other purposes. Pursuant to the rule, the gentlewoman from New Mexico, Ms. Lega Fernandez, and the gentleman from Arkansas, Mr. Westerman, each will control 20 minutes. The chair recognizes the gentlewoman from New Mexico. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I ask unanimous consent that all members may have five legislative days in which to revise and extend their remarks and include extraneous material on the measure under consideration. Without objection. Speaker, I yield myself such time as I may consume. Without objection. Thank you, Madam Speaker. You know, today is the first day of the month that is dedicated to Native American heritage. As we all know, the United States' historic treatment of our indigenous governments and peoples is fought with genocide, displacement, termination, and attempts to eliminate Native American culture, language, and identity. But as a nation, we have also taken actions, actions to remedy that, to build back from that sad history. In 1934, Congress recognized that termination was the wrong policy and passed the Indian Reorganization Act, which recognized tribal governments and placed most remaining tribal land into trust. In 1975, we passed the Indian De Self-Determination Act, which allowed tribes to reassert their sovereignty and jurisdiction over their own lands and programs intended to benefit them. But the work is far from done. Through bipartisan legislation we are debating today and many other legislative initiatives we will undertake this 117th Congress, we are furthering tribal recognition and reacquisition of tribal homelands. We are strengthening the consultation requirements to provide better health care to the 70% of Native Americans living in urban areas. In the Infrastructure Bill and Build Back Better Act, we will have historic levels of funding for programs that meet the trust responsibilities owed to Native Americans, promised to them as the United States entered into treaties and took over their historic lands. Our work today declares that it is not enough to just acknowledge Native American heritage. We must also pass the legislation that protects that heritage and strengthens tribal sovereignty and self-determination. I want to thank Majority Leader Hoyer for scheduling these bills to be heard today as we begin Native American Heritage Month. I especially want to thank Chairman Grijalva and Ranking Member Westerman uh, for moving the bills through the Natural Resources Committee. I wish to thank the sponsor of the bills and the committee staff who dedicate themselves to getting things done on behalf of the indigenous peoples of our country. With that, I'll turn to H.R. 1619, the Catawba Indian Nation Lands Act, introduced by Representative Clyburn of South Carolina. Carolina. Will it will ratify and confirm the Department of the Interior's decision to take into trust 17 acres of land in Cleveland County, North Carolina, for the benefit of the Catawba Indian Nation. The Catawba Indian Nation is the only federalized recognized tribe in South Carolina, and its approximately 3,400 members reside primarily in the Catawba River Valley. The current Catawba Reservation is made up of multiple parcels of land in South Carolina, totaling about 700 acres. To improve the tribal economy and meet the needs of tribal members, the Catawba Nation petitioned the Department of Interior to place approximately 17 acres of land known as the Kings Mountain Site into trust in Cleveland County, North Carolina, for gaming and other purposes. On March 12, 2020, the Department of Interior accepted the Catawba Indian Nation's request to transfer the land into trust. The department's decision derived from the terms of the Catawba Indian Tribe of South Carolina Land Claim Settlement Act of 1993, which ended the nation's fight against the state of South Carolina in its assertion of aboriginal land claims. The act not only restored the federal trust relationship between the nation and the federal government, but it also contained various provisions about the trust acquisition of land by the Secretary of the Interior the use of such land for gaming, and the applicability of the Indian Gaming Regulatory Act. 
Following the announcement of the Interior's decision, the Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians filed a suit against it to block the nation's plans to construct a casino complex at the Kings Mountain site. Among other assertions, the Eastern Band of Cherokee Indian claims that the project will encroach upon its aboriginal territory. However, the historical records demonstrate the Kings Mountain site is within the aboriginal and historic lands of the Catawba Nation. H.R. 1619 will thus reaffirm the Department of the Interior's recognition of Catawba Indian Nation's historical and ancestral ties to the lands in Kings Mountain and the Catawba Nation's right to conduct gaming operations on those lands under the terms of the Indian Gaming Regulatory Act. The legislation will provide much needed economic development opportunities to the nation and the surrounding local communities. I want to thank Mr. Clyburn for championing this bipartisan legislation, and I urge its quick adoption. I reserve the balance of my time. The gentlewoman reserves. For what purpose does, oh, the gentleman is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I yield myself as much time as I may consume. Without objection. Madam Speaker, H.R. 1619 would ratify and reaffirm a March 2020 decision by the Department of Interior to place 17 acres of land located in Kings Mountain, North Carolina, into trust for the Catawba Indian Nation. In 1980, the Catawba tribe filed a land claim for former tribal land in South Carolina, but the agreement they entered with the state failed to provide a clear understanding as to where the tribe may have lands held in trust. What process is required or whether the Indian Gaming Regulatory Act applies to the Catawba Nation. By 1993, the tribe and the state of South Carolina entered into an agreement to settle the lawsuit, and the South Carolina legislature enacted a law ratifying that agreement. That same year, Congress ratified the settlement agreement by passing the Catawba Indian Tribe of South Carolina Land Claim Settlement Act and extinguished any other potential claims of the Catawba. In exchange, the Catawba received $50 million, the restoration of their status as a federally recognized tribe, and a streamlined process for restoring its land base in South Carolina. But confusion about the tribe's land continued as it submitted an application with the Department of the Interior to place land in Cleveland County, North Carolina, acquired into trust to develop a casino. Even after the Department of the Interior approved the Catawba's trust application, determining that the tribe met the restored lands exemption under the Indian Gaming Regulatory Act, there were still ambiguities that led to a challenge in court. I hope that this bill will finally resolve the remaining issues and give the Catawba tribe certainty about its land and the ways it can use it. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and I reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman reserves. The gentlewoman from New Mexico. Madam Speaker, I yield five minutes to the gentleman from South Carolina. The gentleman is recognized. Thank you very much for yielding me the time. I promise you I won't use the five minutes. I'll leave that uh, for uh, somebody else. Madam Speaker, I rise today to call upon this August body for a favorable vote on H.R. 1619. That's a very interesting uh, number uh, for this legislation. This legislation known as the Catawba Indian Nations Lands Act. The Catawba Indian Nations Lands Act clarifies that the Catawba Indian Nation is subject to the well-established rules and regulations of the Indian Gaming Regulatory Act on their modern and ancestral lands in the state of North Carolina. This legislation will clarify the tribe's 1993 Land Claims Settlement Act and reaffirm recent action taken by the Department of Interior to take land into trust for the tribe. Most importantly, this bipartisan legislation is a very significant step towards rectifying historic injustices that have been perpetrated against the Catawba Indian Nation. Like in many other instances of current effects of historical inequities, the Catawba Nation experiences high unemployment and poverty rates, causing many of its citizens to rely upon federal and state governments for basic 
social service. The enactment of this legislation is critical to helping the Catawba Indian Nation secure economic self-sufficiency as Congress originally intended when it passed the Indian Gaming Regulatory Act of 1988. I respectfully ask my colleagues for a favorable vote on this act, and I yield back the rest of my time. Does the gentlewoman reserve? The gen yes, a reserve. Gentleman from Arkansas. Madam Speaker, I yield such time as he may consume to the gentleman from South Carolina, Mr. Timmons. Gentleman's recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I rise today in strong support of H.R. 1619, the Catawba Indian Nations Land Act. I was proud to partner with the Majority Whip, Mr. Clyburn, and several other of my colleagues from North and South Carolina in introducing this legislation. This bill is straightforward. It would simply codify action taken by President Trump's Department of Interior last year, granting 17 acres of the Catawba Indian Nation's ancestral lands into trust for the tribe. This action by the Interior Department has been held up needlessly in the federal court system, although the only decisions so far have been held in favor of the Catawbas. This bill would cut short that process and confirm the ability for the Catawba Indian Nation to move forward with their plans for this piece of land which I would note again, is most certainly within the borders of their ancestral homelands. This piece, this piece of land will be critical in providing economic opportunity for a community that suffers from above average unemployment and poverty rates. This will enable self-sufficiency and reduce the need for members of the Catawba population to rely on federal and state governments for basic social services. This step has been many years in the making and I am glad to have played a small part in getting it done. I would also like to thank our partners in the Senate, Senators Graham, Tillis, and Burr for spearheading this effort in their body. Hopefully we can get this important piece of legislation to the president's desk in short order. In closing, I would like to ask my colleagues to join me in support of this bill. It is bipartisan, it is common sense, and it will very much help the 3,400 members of the Catawba Nation in North and South Carolina live more prosperous lives. Thank you, and I yield back. Madam Speaker, I yield back the balance of our time. Gentleman yields back. Madam Speaker, I yield two minutes to the gentleman from North Carolina, Mr. Butterfield. Gentleman is recognized. Let me first thank you, Congresswoman Ledger Fernandez, for your friendship. Thank you for your leadership, and thank you for yielding time to me this afternoon. Uh, Madam Speaker, I rise in support of H.R. 1619, the Catawba Indian Nation Lands Act. A few moments ago, Congressman Clyburn made reference to the fact that uh, 1619 was a very, uh, very significant number. Uh, what he was referring to, Madam Speaker, was that it was the year 1619 uh, that the first slaves arrived in America, first African slaves, I might say, arrived in America. Uh, and so it's very um, interesting that this bill bears that number, but I am in full support, full support of this legislation. Madam Speaker, this is good bipartisan legislation. You can see that it has support on both sides of the aisle. It will ratify actions taken by the Department of Interior that place 17 acres of land in North Carolina that are within the Catawba service area as defined by Congress in 1993, place that land into trust for the benefit of the tribe. This bill will enable the Catawba Indian Nation to secure economic self-sufficiency as envisioned by Congress in passing the Indian Gaming Regulatory Act of 1987. It will generate millions, millions of dollars in economic development and create thousands of jobs in North Carolina where few jobs currently exist. That, Madam Speaker, is why I have such a deep interest in this legislation because of the economic impact. The Catawba Nation has already signed an agreement. I need to make sure the record is clear about that. The Catawba Nation has already signed an agreement with our governor, Governor Roy Cooper, and they have the support of the local community. And so I respectfully urge my colleagues to vote yes on this important legislation. I yield back. Gentlewoman from New Mexico. Madam Speaker, I think that we have heard today about the importance of how uh, we are in essence making history by undoing a little bit of the 
unfortunate history of the United States. This small parcel of land, which will be taken into trust, will yield significant benefits for the tribe. And I do appreciate the fact that, like all the legislation we are considering today, it is bipartisan, and that all of those who are supporting it recognize the benefits that it will bring to the Catawba Nation. Uh, uh, Madam Speaker, I urge my colleagues to support the legislation, and I yield back the balance of my time. The question is, will the House suspend the rules and pass the bill H.R. 1619? Those in favor will indicate by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, no. In the opinion of the chair, two-thirds being in the affirmative. Demand the ayes and ayes. Pursuant to section th uh, three of the House Resolution 8, the yeas and nays are ordered. Pursuant to clause eight of rule 20, further proceedings on this question will be postponed. <laughs>